Thank you very much for tuning into this second video of Dr. Johnson C. Philip on Bibliology. We appreciate it very much. We keep uploading new in-depth videos regularly in English, Hindi, and Malayalam languages. Please click the thumbs up icon, the subscribe icon, and the bell icon below this video before you proceed. This will be a great encouragement to everyone who is involved in producing and distributing these videos. God bless you. My plan was to go directly to bibliology uh, in the second class, but many of you who have my number with you wrote to me asking many questions because of that. Uh, I felt that I need to introduce the subject a little more in breadth. For example, many were surprised, they said, uh, they were surprised that uh, other religions also have theology. Actually, the word theology only means belief related to God and his dealings. And therefore, theology is not a word unique to the Christian faith. Even systematic theology is not a word unique to the Christian faith. Theology only means a collection of all the uh, spiritual and religious information. And therefore, um, religions like Hinduism, they have an elaborate theology. Islam has its own theology. Tao and Shinto have their own theology. Buddhists and Jainists and Persian Zoroastrians also have their own theology. And therefore, if you, if you go to a bookshop and find a book on theology, don't grab it thinking that it is theology of the Bible or systematic theology related to the Bible. Uh, before I uh, move forward, I want to remind you that of all the theologies that non-Christians have produced, Hindus, Hindus have produced the most elaborate schools of thought, and they have six different types of theology, ranging from totally atheistic theology up to the most refined human thought. Please listen to me. Not the whole, most refined biblical thought. What I said is most refined human thought. It is there in Hinduism. Within Christian community, a lot of people have introduced deviant theologies. They deviate from the core truth of the Bible. For example, Black theology, which was very popular a few years ago. Actually, black theology is Marxism baptized in Christian terms with a few sprinkling of few Bible verses here and there. There is liberation theology, which was very popular. These days, they don't talk about liberation theology, but liberation theology has very firmly embedded itself in liberal Bible colleges. And you might be surprised to hear that even Alcoholics Anonymous have their own theology. Some years ago, somebody sent a commentary on the Gospel of Mark for review to me, and I was stunned to read that commentary where Lord Jesus and disciples are portrayed about Formal, former alcoholics and the gospel of Mark as an account of 13 alcoholics trying to come out of it. These are all, these they claim to be Christian theology, but we must know they have nothing to do with Christ or Bible or inspiration or infallibility. And therefore, once again, let me remind you, if you see a book on theology in a secular bookshop or in a Christian bookshop, don't jump at it. Don't grab it. It might be slow poison. In all possibility, it might be slow poison. Get the proper book after getting proper recommendation.
there is one particular theology which is uh, most dangerous and that is interfaith theology where they try to bring people of different religion with each other or into fellowship and communion and they redefine everything they define god they define salvation redefine everything in such a way that both the religions are satisfied in india the best example of uh, interfaith theology is uh, um can be illustrated by an organization which was uh, started a few years ago known as kristava vedanta vedi christian vedanta christian and vedanta platform they tried to marry the christian theology with vedanta vedanta believes in a non personal god whereas bible speaks about a personal god they were trying to marry these together that is interfaith theology this christo vedanta vedi and interfaith theology between uh, uh, christians and hinduism particularly vedanta was very popular in 1980s and early 1990s and uh, since a lot of people listening to me are from brethren background let me remind you that some brethren were at the forefront of kristava vedanta vedi that organization is no more and now nobody is trying that but here and there there are many attempts to marry christian theology with hinduism today tamil nadu is the focus of such work coming to the scripture the correct form of theology is that is that theology which accepts that the 66 books of the bible are the its inspired infallible word of god based upon the inspired upon the belief in inspired and infallible word of god theology can be classified at least into three types four types sorry four types one is systematic theology which we are going to cover systematic theology takes various subjects and systematizes everything that the bible speaks about these subjects but within our churches there are there is also or within legitimate theology there are three more one is biblical theology biblical theology understands or we take into consideration that god gave some revelation in genesis but things were not as clear to them as it is today revelation god gave revelation part by part and also in a progressive manner that is what hebrews chapter 1 verses 1 and 2 say so when we talk about progressive revelation we need to understand that many of the things that are clear to us today they were not clear when the book of malachi was written or when psalms were written or when the historical books of the old testament were written so taking each book in its context say taking genesis in context and analyzing exactly what they understood exactly what was revealed in the book of genesis about god about man about salvation then going to exodus and checking what are the extra things revealed there and this way studying progressive revelation uh, progressive revelation in the bible is done in biblical theology there is also historical theology historical theology last week last time i had shown you a book history of christian doctrine by burkhoff um when we study theology it becomes very clear that our understanding though the scripture is final revelation our understanding of the revealed word of god has also been progressive 
within bible revelation has been progressive outside the bible human understanding of revelation also has been progressive a good example is the doctrine of trinity it took the church about three centuries to understand the doctrine of trinity clearly or with sufficient clarity and therefore in the third and fourth centuries a number of classic works were produced on the doctrine of theology the doctrine of trinity and it is because of these works that muslims say that theology the doctrine of trinity is not in the bible it is the third century or fourth century construct that is not right but and a clearer understanding of the doctrine of trinity uh, took place in the third and fourth century that's all so uh, that branch of theology which studies the way in which our perception and our understanding of various doctrines has progressed is uh, covered in historical theology and then there is dogmatic theology we know that there are a large number of bible believing churches worldwide brethren are a bible believing church but there are also fundamental baptists who are a bible believing group then there are many groups that say in usa that call themselves as bible churches in kerala there are many churches that call themselves as local churches they all believe in the fundamentals but there are areas of difference the theology or a clear explanation of the theology held by a single church group is known as dogmatic theology in this class we will not be studying or in this series we will not be covering biblical theology or historical theology or dogmatic theology in this class we will be covering certain portions of systematic theology systematic theology takes the whole bible analyzes it sifts and sorts and comes to deductions and when such sifting and sorting and deduction is made as i said last time almost everything falls into 11 categories starting from bibliology and going up to eschatology but over the years within systematic theology many varieties have come up and we should very clearly know about them the first is within the main the christian mainstream various kinds of theologies have come up we should very clearly distinguish between them the first is ritualistic theology the protestant reformation that took place about 550 years ago emphasized only one point or it started with emphasis on one point and that was justification by faith uh, mostly picked up from or mostly derived from romans but as churches developed and number of people increased people wanted to control these churches and for controlling people various rituals were added many churches have now become completely ritualistic and without ritual there is no salvation according to their teaching there is no salvation without rituals these people have developed their own theologies and these can be called as a ritualistic theology where they claim that unless a person undergoes or submits to all the rituals of the church he won't be saved he will not have salvation they have also written books on systematic theology often we fail to understand this difference uh to make things clear uh we should very clearly understand that a systematic theology written by a roman catholic scholar 
would definitely contain glorification of Mary. It will also contain justification of rituals that a person can obtain salvation only if he submits to or yields to the seven cardinal or important rituals of the church. Without them, there is no salvation. So within systematic theology or within Christ Christendom, not the deviant philosophies like black theology or liberal theology, within Christendom, the mainstream of Christendom, there are various kinds of theologies. One is ritualistic. Roman Catholic Church is the best example. The Orthodox and Jacobite churches are another example. Within Christendom, another kind of theology, they call themselves as liberal theologians. A person who is liberal actually accommodates everyone. But these those within Christian community who call, call themselves as liberal theologians, they do not accommodate anybody. In fact, they are opposed to every other sort of thinking. They are opposed to the canon made of 66 books. They are opposed to the vicarious death of Christ on the cross. They are opposed to justification by faith. And therefore, the correct term for them is a radical. A radical is a person who rejects everything. So after ritualistic theology, we have radical theology. And a large number of books on systematic theology, available very cheap in the market, have been written by radical theologians. These radical theologians reject six-day creation. They reject the 66, uh, 66 canonical books. They reject the incarnation of Lord Jesus. They reject salvation by grace through faith. They reject justification by faith. Then there is a very interesting uh, branch of, or kind of theology and a lot of brethren people have fallen victims and that is neo-orthodox theology. Neo-orthodox theology uh, theologians use exactly the same words that you and I use, in inerrance, infallibility, canon, but they define these words in a totally opposite way. And uh, uh, a question has come, uh, kindly send questions by WhatsApp to me so that I have enough time to think through and present a compact answer as part of my presentation. Um, extempore, I will not be answering any questions, but I am a teacher who loves questions. And if I don't get questions, I am unhappy. Okay, so please do send your questions to me. I'll mention my uh, WhatsApp number uh, do, uh, at the time of closing and any number of questions. Keep them coming. And Lord willing, I will handle all of them. But please remember, I need a little time to think through uh, so that I can present them in a compact manner as part of the ongoing studies. So neo-Orthodox theologians have, they are all over the Christian faith. And there are many, many, many brethren Bible teachers who are very fond of uh, neo-Orthodox Bible teachers. But please remember, when they say word of God, they don't mean the 66 books of the Bible. When they say canon, they don't mean 66 books of the Bible. When they speak about salvation, they are not talking about salvation that is uh, mentioned in John's Gospel, chapter 3, 16. Then there is also a group known as neo-evangelical. Neo-evangelicals have produced a lot of textbooks related to Bible and systematic theology. They believe in salvation by grace through faith, but that's all. That's almost all. They reject six-day creation. They reject uh, that Bible alone is the word of God. They reject the idea that Bible is infallible. They reject the idea that Bible is verbally inspired and all that. The only thing common that we have with them is that many of them accept, accept that 
salvation is by grace through faith then we come to what is known as evangelical christians that is a word used commonly evangelical christians are christians who accept salvation by grace through faith they are people who accept justification by faith but they might be more loose on doctrines like uh, six day creation they might take a looser view of uh, the accuracy of the bible or the scientific reliability of the bible and then finally we come to the category that we are the category that t e r c is we are conservatives or fundamentalists unfortunately many christians have not understood the real meaning of these words and therefore they use this word in a very bad or pejorative sense actually conservative is a person who conserves what god has given him a fundamentalist is a person who believes in the fundamentals of the word of god there are lot of narrow minded people and often to speak about the narrow minded parents people wrongly use the word oh they are fundamentalists please remember christians should be very careful not to misunderstand and not to misuse words like conservative or fundamentalist or orthodox a conservative is a person who conserves what god has given a fundamentalist is a person who believes in the fundamentals of the scripture orthodox orthodox means straight teaching uh, i'm not talking about a denomination known as orthodox i'm talking about a way of thinking which is orthodox so we are basically conservative fundamentalist and orthodox we believe that bible is the only inspired word of god and that only 66 books of the canon are inspired by holy spirit they are inspired verbally word each word there is there because because god wanted it there verbal inspiration doesn't mean that each word was spoken by god uh, the scripture records what was spoken by the serpent in eden what was spoken by the donkey and what was spoken by non christians pagans uh when we say it is verbally inspired what we mean is every word is there because god wanted it there on purpose so we believe that bible is the verbally inspired word of god free of error and the final authority in all matters of doctrine and practice human opinion has plays no role in form forming uh, that means in doctrine and practice ultimately everything should be derived from the word of god with that understanding a large number of conservative theologians have produced a large number of systematic theologies when i say large number of systematic theologies i am not saying that their theology is different what i am saying is that they have produced a large number of volumes last in the last class i introduced the malayalam systematic theology of which i was the architect but which was written uh, by four people i also introduced the book that all of you should read and that is in understanding we men by tc hammond this is the most concise volume on the full range of systematic theology you may say brother that such and such brother said there is a two volume three volume uh, systematic theology that would be better well let me assure you that a beginner should begin at the beginning once you are able to take the initial steps then you choose a multi volume systematic theology 
I know a number of people who wanted to study theology. I recommended this to all of them. They despised that recommendation. They went and purchased uh, the eight volume systematic theology of Louis Sperry Schaefer. Let me remind you, it takes a lot of determination to read eight volumes of Schaefer. Start with, begin at the beginning, begin with this book. I searched for an electronic copy, but the book is still in copyright. And therefore electronic copies are not available. But I'm sure if you search enough, you will be able to get a second-hand copy. This is a second-hand copy I purchased from somewhere in Masuri. There are many online second-hand bookshops and you might be able to get a copy, read it, enjoy it, internalize it. And after that, you can buy, there is a systematic theology by Hodge, that is multi-volume. There is systematic theology by Strong, that is a one volume, but very small letters. There is a systematic theology by Louis Perry Schaefer, eight volumes. Then uh, the one of the latest one, Gruden. I very strongly recommend Gruden for those who would like to go in depth. Uh, but please remember, Gruden is not to be your first choice. If Gruden is your first choice, that will also be your last lesson in theology. You won't be able to handle it. So please, uh, bite small, chew, and when you're strong, go for larger volumes. On inspiration and authority of the word of God, number of books are there. Uh, the best one, as I reminded you once again, is uh, uh, the inspiration and authority of scripture by Rene Pake. The spelling might be, the pronunciation of the name might be different in his country, I'm using Paka uh, Indian pronunciation. This book is available as a soft copy. Uh, if you get a copy of Gawson, that is also good on inspiration. But having examined a few hundred books, this is the best of the best. Today, as uh, our brother was introducing the subject, he quoted uh, 2 Timothy 3.16. In bibliology, that is our key verse. Bibliology deals with that branch of theology which explains all what the Bible says about itself. In first round of bibliology, we gather all the verses in the Bible that speak about the Bible itself. That there are a substantial number of verses that speak about Bible itself. In the Old Testament, uh, there are many passages that many of you, I, I'm sure you remember, and God said, and God commanded, and in the New Testament also, similarly, there are hundreds of verses. Bibliology or a study of what the Bible teaches about itself begins with a gathering of all these verses, then a sifting and sorting. Some of them speak about the authority of the Bible. Some of them speak about the inspiration of the Bible. Some of them speak about uh, uh, the purpose of the Bible. Others speak about the names used for Bible. All of these verses are gathered, sifted, sorted, and then analyzed. This may look like a mammoth task. Yes, it is a mammoth task, but God has been gracious and he has raised a large number of scholars who devoted their entire lives to do this kind of things, either on multiple fields in theology or in a given field. For example, this book, Rene Packet. So after everything is sifted, sorted, arranged, classified, each and every verse is then examined, if necessary, in great detail. 
and once all that is done they write this is how a number of people have written on uh, bibliology and we will since all of this material is available we will be i will be referring to many of them i will be using many of them um i am doing my own study on bibliology separately i started uh, doing that uh, gathering part from new testament and i found that that it is such a job that it might require many years but i am doing that at the same time i am consulting the best of the best um referring the best of the best and presenting here so second timothy 3:16 says that all scripture is given by the inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine reproof correction and for instruction in righteousness that the man of god may be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works so the foundation of bibliology is our commitment to this verse that all scripture is inspired by holy spirit what exactly do we mean by inspiration that we will uh, take up later just suffice to say that when a person says i was inspired by reading a book or i was inspired to write an article uh, the scripture is not talking about that kind of an inspiration we are all inspired to do various things i am a writer i keep on writing every day i write and i am highly motivated and inspired to write this is not that kind of inspiration this is a very special inspiration about which the scripture gives us a lot of light and when we study all of that it becomes clear that god the holy spirit raised a number of people approximately 40 people and the holy spirit gave them a special guidance to write these 66 books in such a way that they wrote exactly what the holy spirit wanted them to write even even when in an epistle of paul then paul says that we wanted that expression is there because god the holy spirit wanted that expression there that is the meaning of inspiration when it is used in relation to the scripture another key verse related to bibliology is second peter 120 second peter 120 says knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation uh that is old english uh what it wants to say is that knowing this first that no statement of the scripture or prophecy of scripture has come because of private opinion malayalam is more clear in english other translations i am reading from king james bible other translations make it clearer in english malayalam is good tiruvelthile pravajanam onnum swayamaya vyakhyanathal ulavayadalla that means it has not come through the private interpretation of any individual so knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture has come through private interpretation of individuals thank you brother benhar has quoted that verse and those of you who have access to the comment box can see that verse there uh, second peter 120 and 21 brother uh it is it has not come through private interpretation because the prophecy came not in old times by the will of man but holy men of god spoke as they were moved by the holy spirit these two verses are the foundation of bibliology number 1 all scripture is inspired by god number 2 it was not their private opinion rather they were moved by the holy spirit and because of that move by the holy spirit they wrote it and here i need to pause for a few moments 
for some practical application and practical lessons see unless theology relates to our day to day life theology is dead a lot of theology without relating it with daily life will make us dead it will make us pharisees so there is a very important application here the scripture very clearly says that they were moved by the holy spirit and since they were moved by the holy spirit they wrote what the holy spirit wanted them to write 300 years ago a bunch of theological radicals supported by government money challenged conservatives fundamentalists and orthodox that what we say today your grandchildren will repeat it as god's word and one of their aims was to seduce us into claiming that a lot of things in the bible are written by men that it is their private opinion uh, i said uh, they did it by government money you should know i'm talking about german theologians and in germany for the last 400 years or so all bible seminaries are government organizations they are not private they are financed by the government and it is government who appoints professors and when the government appoints professors whether is born again or not no they don't check it they check whether this fellow has a good high qualification and degree it is they who said your grandchildren will repeat this as god's word what you today claim is heresy what happened what has happened 300 years of their brainwashing today when we stand up in pulpit a lot of us when we read the scripture we never say the holy spirit says we never say the scripture says i have been i have been analyzing and counting this for many years when i hear somebody preaching how many times does he say the holy spirit says the scripture says i've counted many many messages 45 minute messages in which people have said up to 25 or more times paul says peter says james says please remember when our children hear us saying paul is saying this peter is saying this james is saying this they will pick up the idea behind it oh this is paul's word this is peter's word this is james's word not it is not the holy spirit who is speaking it is not uh, peter who is uh, it is not scripture that is speaking it is paul who is speaking it is peter who is speaking it is james who is speaking when we see paul is an instrument peter is an instrument therefore we at least those who are attending trc class they should become pioneers in abandoning this expression that paul is saying peter is speaking and in the opinion of james we should start using words like the scripture says the holy spirit made paul to write the holy spirit says or the this these are kinds of expressions that we we need to use if you look at protestant scholars who wrote more than 300 years ago they never wrote paul wrote this peter wrote this they usually said the holy spirit said this the scripture says this you look at any contem- contemporary writing our contemporary writings are filled with paul says peter says james says he says you say i say the holy spirit has been completely removed from our conversation our bible exposition the tighter you wring a cloth at a wet towel the more the water in it will go out in the same way the more you repeat paul says peter says james says the more 
the idea that this is the infallible and inherent inspired word of god that idea will go out of our children's minds so let us be very careful when we handle the scripture the scripture says it is not peter who is speaking god used the agency of peter the scripture says that the prophecy did not come in old times by the will of man holy men of god spoke as they were moved by the holy spirit there are many dangers when we attribute to man the writing of the word of god or the ideas found in the word of god i remember some years ago i went for a meeting of uh, asia theological association many of you have heard about ata at that time brethren bible institute patanandita was uh, uh, accredited by ata and uh, in the annual meeting i and another faculty member we went and as we were uh, sitting and eating somebody some some women there were couple, many women also men, women professors from bible schools uh, one woman said uh, paul was very anti woman i was stunned here is an agency that is accrediting bible schools and bible colleges across india and brethren and pentecostals are greedily going and bowing to them for accreditation but the people who are running this the general body of this organization contains people who believe that paul was anti woman uh as you will study you will uh, apologetics you will understand that there are some test questions which you can ask in any situation to understand their theological beliefs so while we were having uh, dinner i asked uh, what do you feel about uh, the biblical command that women should remain silent in the church ah she uh, i i was the senior among us on that table i was the senior most she immediately said sir that is why i said paul was anti woman and since he was anti woman he said women should not open their mouths i was stunned again my leading question gave me exactly what i wanted to hear i wanted to know about her theology so in a very smiling and charming way uh, i asked her whether she believed that 66 books of the bible were free of error she said how can they be free of error sir the old testament was written by a bunch of uneducated uh, street roaming preachers see these are some of the key questions that conservatives should ask radicals many of us many many conservatives when they stand in front of radicals they wet their pants i'm using that expression with a full knowledge of what happens or what is happening in theological circles why should conservatives be so much afraid of liberals why are we afraid to ask these leading questions particularly when it comes to bibliology we are afraid to ask because because of our carelessness we have ruined our own theology bibliology and when we preach instead of holy spirit it is paul who is speaking instead of the scripture it is peter who is speaking and therefore as we proceed with bibliology let me urge everyone in this audience to realize that we have been brainwashed for the last 300 years to project the bible as man's word not as scripture or not as the word of holy spirit that is the practical application of the verses two verses that we read so far let us take care 
let us be very cautious not to project the bible and statements in the bible as human opinion men wrote it men wrote these books and the holy spirit allowed them to express their personalities through these books but ultimately every word that came there came there because holy spirit wanted it there the next point that we need to remember is or the next key idea the first what i said so far was the first idea it is all here by god's guidance second idea or second important idea in bibliology is non jews were not given verbal inspiration verbal bible is the verbally inspired word of god god used many non jews he gave messages to many non jews in the book of daniel we see the king dreaming a dream in uh, exodus we see pharaoh dreaming a dream god gave them sign some kind of a warning but it doesn't mean that god gave verbally inspired scripture to them you don't have to take my word for it psalms 147 verses 19 and 20 are one example Psalm 147 verses 19 and 20 these verses say he shows his word unto Jacob that is uh, the Jews he shows his word unto Jacob his statutes and his judgments unto Israel God is very clear that he has given his inspired word Uh, we are talking about old testament we are, uh, we are not touching new testament at present in the old testament times god gave his revelation only to people of israel 20 the 20th verse he has not dealt dealt so with any nation and as for his judgments they have not known them the scripture this is a key verse that non jews were not given inspired word of god so many key verses there are many 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 verses scattered all over old testament which make it very clear that in the old testament times god gave his inspired revelation only to jews and only jews he used only jews to write down the 39 canonical books of the old testament please remember uh another question has come please send all those questions to me because uh, uh, i am an old guy no no longer able to focus on multiple things i'll mention my um, mobile number send the questions to me i'll be very happy to handle all those questions the more the questions uh, i would understand that the more i have been able to elicit your response so pharaoh pharaoh saw a dream and all those years all these dreams were interpreted by his own men then how do we know that one particular dream was from god because god used a jew to interpret that dream please remember in the old testament the word of god has come only and only through jews god has revealed it only to jews and god used only jews to interpret his scripture there are many 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 old testament characters whom god used for his plan the execution of his plan a good example is king cyrus the scripture has prophecy about king cyrus many years before he was even born but the scripture is very clear though god used a lot of non christians though god used even animals even at least one animal to speak to the prophet 
ultimately verbally inspired word of god was given only to the jews it was written only by the jews there is no revelation outside the canon i need to emphasize the fact there are many many people who um many many people who believe that scriptures of other religions also contain revelation from god the answer is a plain no when time when time comes we will go into details but the scripture is very clear god gave his revelation only to the house of jacob he did not give it to any other nation and other nations that means other religions old testament often uses the word nation to represent religions they have not understood it lord dilling we will go on from here we will pick up the thread from here in uh, our uh, next class lot of good questions have come in the margin i, I appreciate it. please note my whatsapp number please send all your questions i love questions my number is uh, 999 8690 i will repeat it once again 999 8690 if you were not able to note it down, oh thank you brother dr noel has uh, and brother benhar has also uh, given my number in uh, side comment in case uh, if if you are uh, uh, if you are not able to jot it down you can get it from uh, brother joymon or uh, others who have written down my number i love questions i have come to christian teaching from secular academy where we encourage people to ask questions i i i have that uh, bent of mind please do ask don't spare you may say well if i send through my whatsapp you will know my name you may feel bad that you are unable to uh, answer my question i might be unable to answer your question i am not an all knowing person uh, but i will not feel bad i i would realize that hey here is an area that i need to study further so let all those questions come send through whatsapp whatsapp is the best medium to communicate with me god bless you